impression. What had happened was he was involved in a fairly high profile legal case and he became a, he became a, he turned evidence on a man for somebody to prosecute somebody else. And so he entered what is known as the witness protection program. And see, when you enter the witness protection program, they whisk you away from where you were to someplace nobody knows you. And they give you a brand new identity. <laughs> so nobody can't find you. <laughs> I got to thinking about that, my brother. How when I got saved, I got a brand new name. Amen. I don't know exactly what it is yet. Amen. I but I got one. Amen. I got a new idea. I know I still look like the same old guy, and Dave still looked like the same old guy from his North Carolina driver's license. Amen. But that wasn't his name on his North Carolina driver's license. Amen. I'm just telling you, they gave him a new start, a new idea. Oh, listen, hey, I'm glad when I got saved. Amen. Hey, he took me out of he took me out of Adam and he put me in Christ. Amen. Amen. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Amen. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become Amen. new. And ladies and gentlemen, can I say this to the church? And can I say this to the missionaries? God did not call us to go to the uttermost parts of the earth and make them Americans. Amen. He didn't call us to the uttermost parts of the earth and change their culture. Amen. He called us to carry him the gospel. You see, brother, when I got saved, the Holy Ghost moved in. And I remember shortly after I got saved and I had, I had pretty good mouth on me. I'm not talking about volume, I'm talking about content. Amen, what came out of it. And I remember one time just shortly after I got saved, something happening and, and, and I just, amen, the same words that used to come out on, on a regular basis without any thought came out of my mouth in about mid stream on that third word. I, I never had this happen before. Well, I had it happen when I was younger because I was afraid my mom was going to hear me. <laughs> amen. Or somebody would tell her. But mom wasn't nowhere around. There wasn't any. Amen. And I heard a voice. Now, I don't know how y'all are, but in our family, you know, when, you, when your parents call you by your first name, that means you ought to pay attention. But when they throw your middle name in there, <laughs> that takes paying attention to a whole nother level. Yeah, amen. amen. They, they, toss your, they, they toss your middle name in there when they're calling you. And they mean, they mean hey, it's, not, it's not an option. Right. Amen. And I'm telling you, Sister Angie, the Holy Ghost. Amen. Threw my first and middle name in there and said, what in the world are you doing talking like that? I'd never heard it. Hey, Amen. I'd never heard anything like that before. It's scary. I started looking around. Hey, man, listen, I, as I said, I had a path. I started, I, I was thinking I was hearing voices, man. I started looking around, seeing if anybody's around. Hey, Amen. Because the guys I was talking to that way, they sure weren't going to say that. <laughs> and it wasn't an audible voice. It's louder than that. Amen. Yeah. Hey, Done. He made me a new creature. Yes, Amen. He began to change me. Amen. Ah, oh, listen, I'm glad that change started on the inside. Amen. And can I tell you, that's where she's going to start. Hey, if she starts on the outside, you got trouble. Amen. And can I say this? And I, I'm almost done, I think. But that's one of the that's one of the dangers. If there's a danger in our crowd, is it's easy to come into a church and figure out what's accepted and what's not. Yeah. Amen. And conform. Amen. Listen, I, and I think we ought to live right. Don't, 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 please don't misunderstand me. But it's possible to impersonate a Christian yeah. and not be one. Yeah. Amen. amen. We, know, we, know the, we know the outward standard. We know, amen, the right things to say. We, we'll carry the right Bible. We, amen. We'll, we'll do the right things. But, but there's that war inside all the time. Amen. I'm telling you, there's just never any peace and there's never any joy and there's never any rest. Amen. And I'm telling you, if you're here this morning and I've just described your life, can I tell you this morning, there is a city of refuge to where you can run. Amen. And I'm telling you, I'll say this and I'll quit. I'm glad, listen, when I got saved, God hid me in his son. Amen. So he couldn't find me. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Hey, he put me in Christ so he couldn't find me. Amen. And I'm glad. Hey, I, I, get, I got to say one more thing because this is this is really cool I got I'm trying to I man I've had to have had to land and gear down the lights on and I buzzed the runway twice now but I got to do just one more time I'm leaving a bunch of stuff out but hey 
if you stayed in that city of refuge until the death of the high priest, <laughs> you could go free. Now, there's two ways to look at that. <laughs> there is, Brother Jack. Hey, first of all, Jesus is my high priest. And he gave his life on the cross of Calvary. But the second way to look at that is Jesus is my high priest and he ain't never going to die. Amen. Amen. And I'm safe in him. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, I can just stay there and rejoice. Amen. And then one of these days, they're gonna hear, we're going to hear a trumpet and a shout and he's going to call us home. Amen. And I'm telling you, this whole week, this whole week is about carrying that message to a world who's never heard. I've got some friends of ours that are serving as medical missionaries in Papua New Guinea. You know Brother Matt Allen? Anyway, his daddy and mama, John and Lena Allen, John used to pastor the Landmark Baptist Church in Louisville, Kentucky, or the Don Mangus's church. They're over there serving as medical missionaries. They're, they're up in the highlands of Papua New Guinea. And the measles are running rampant through Papua New Guinea. I read something she wrote last week, Sister Angie. A family of, with four children, three of them died last week because of measles. A family of six children, four of the six died because of measles. Now, measles isn't a problem around our country because we got a vaccination. And they got vaccination in New Guinea, but they just, the people in charge aren't getting it up to where it's running rampant. And I thought, how cruel would it be to have the vaccination for measles and be in possession of it and be close enough to administer it and then just not. And ladies and gentlemen, there's something running rampant through our country and through our world that's a whole lot deadlier than measles. It's going to claim a whole lot more lives. And here you and I sit inside the comfortable walls of this log church building with the vaccine. Amen. Or the means to get it where it's needed. And as Brother Dilbert said, well, that's just none of my business. Really? Is that your final answer? I wonder this morning as we stand with our heads bowed and our eyes closed. Every head bowed and every eye closed. I wonder this morning. <clears throat> How many of us with an honest heart and an uplifted hand could say, Preacher, I know that I know that I know that heaven's going to be my home. I know I'm going to heaven for a Bible reason, and I can raise my hand as a testimony to that fact. Would you slip your hand up? Let me see it this morning. That's a, that's a lot of hands up. You can put your hands down. Now, there's no way in the world that in a crowd this large, in a room this full, that I could see every hand. But I do want to ask this this morning, if there be somebody to say, Preacher, I could not raise my hand a moment ago. But I'd sure like to know. And you'd say, Preacher, if there's a way that I could know for sure that I was going to heaven, that I could be safe from that revenge of blood, Preacher, I'd sure like to know. And I'd like to ask you to pray for me. Now, I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to point you out. And we're not going to send the social workers to you. I just want to know that God spoke to your heart. Would you slip your hand up? And all I'll do is say thank you or God bless you. I'll just acknowledge your uplifted hand and then have a word of prayer for you. I see that hand. Thank you. And that hand. Thank you. Anybody else? Just slip it up and let me see it. Slip it up and just wave it at me. Let me see it. And you can put it right back down. Anybody else? Say, preacher, that's me this morning. I'm not sure if I died right now that heaven would be my home. In just a moment. Our sister at the piano is going to begin to play. We're going to open this altar. I'm going to take this microphone off. I'm going to step right down here in the front. Brother Dilbert's going to be right down here in the front. Sister Angie's here. My wife is here. 
If you raise your hand and, you, and you're not sure and you'd like to get that settled this morning, I would beg you in the strongest language possible to leave your seat and come down here and take one of our hands and let us have the privilege of showing you the way to that city of refuge. There are no impediments on that road for you. You'll just have to take that first step of the journey. I wonder this morning, before I pray, how many of us, we raised our hand that we're saved, but we'd, we'd say, Preacher, I'll be honest with you. I know I'm not doing all I could do or all I should do to reach the world with the gospel, both here and abroad. And preacher, I'm concerned enough about that that I'd raise my hand and ask you to pray for me. Let me see your hands this morning. God, you know the need. God, you're big enough to meet it. But God, you have chosen to allow us to be involved in this work. God, you have chosen to allow us to have a part in carrying the gospel. Lord, I pray that we'd not just reduce it to money and try to buy you off this week. But God, we'd ask you what you'd have us to do. Father, for these hands, I think two of them, or maybe three, if I, if I just caught one as it was going down. These hands that were raised concerning their soul salvation. Father, I pray that, God, they would have the, the wherewithal to step out of their place in the pew and step down an aisle and let somebody take the Word of God to show them how they can be saved. God, for those of us that raised our hands, God, that know we're not doing all we could or all we should, God, help us to find our way to an altar. And God, present to you our bodies a living sacrifice. And God, I pray in Jesus' name that you would bless this meeting and this week, these missionaries that have come to be with us. Lord, I know it's this church's desire to be a blessing. I know that. Father, I pray that God, everything that we do this week would, would bring a smile to your face. God would bring joy to your heart. And Father, we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As our sister begins to play, if you need to find your way to an altar this morning, you come.